see you, brother. Hey, man, good to see you, man. Thank you for even agreeing to do this, man. Of course, no problem at all. Appreciate you even asking me to, to be on here, you know. Hey, man, you know, when I uh, when Tig mentioned you, man, and just kind of talked about, well, he didn't really get into it, but when he mentioned your name and I did my, my research, I was like, man, this dude is supremely accomplished, and I just don't know enough about him. I was just like, I need to talk to him. No, I appreciate that, too. That's, that's that's one of my guys, you know what I'm saying? We don't been on the road together and just and really locked in, so I appreciate the link. Hey, man, it's all love here. Uh, do you mind if I call you Dre? <laughs> no, that's fine. Dre, Dre good. Oh, that's cool with me. Dre good. How you feeling today, man? I'm feeling great. How about yourself? Hey, man, I can't complain, man. I'm talking to you, so it's, it's an honor, bro. For sure. Man, you know... I've done my research on you and I've, you know, I've mentioned some things and I'm going to talk about that. But um, when people ask you, what do you do or how is it that you earn a living? What do you usually tell them? Man, that's, it's so funny because that's one of the hardest, hardest questions to answer just because I do like so many different things and I do want to be respected in everything that I do. So it's like when somebody asks you what you're doing, it's like, oh man, just to even explain it to you, it's just, it's very difficult, but um management artist management um producer management i'm a music producer myself creative director um i assess and manage different businesses on you know what I'm saying just different scales and and levels um i mean at the end of the day I, I like to think of myself as as a creative but i'm not limited to to one sector you know what i'm saying so it's just wherever it takes me but my goal is if there was you know what I'm saying? If I could, I would I would love to shake every single person's hand on the planet and just have a conversation with them. You know what I'm saying? So that's just the kind of person I am. I want to do a little bit of everything. Honestly, man, like I said, a brief search of you, bro. I've I've seen so many different paths that you went down and so many different destinations. And, you know, that brings me to my first question. You know, could you explain to us a little bit about your early childhood? I I saw, I think, where you went to high school at, and I was like, man, that sounds like that's in Texas. And I was like, I don't know if I'm mistaken, but I was like, would you would you mind walking us through uh, your early childhood, where you grew up, and what life was like in, in Texas for you? Yeah, man. So um, I'm a military brat. Uh, I was I was born actually on a military base, Fort Hood military base. Um, they changed the name now. I think it's called Fort Cabazos. But everybody who's from there knows Fort Hood. You know what I'm saying? People who aren't from there know Fort Hood. It's, I think it's one of the biggest military bases um, in the U.S. But, um, yeah, I was born there. But I, I would say if you ask me where I'm from, I'll say I'm from Colleen, Texas. Um, went to Colleen High School. Um, I went to elementary school, middle school, on base. And just besides that, I kind of, like, moved around a little bit. I was born in Texas, but I also lived in – uh, Virginia. I lived in Japan for a little bit. Uh, I lived in Georgia. My family's from Georgia, so I kind of would frequent Georgia, but I would always end up back in Texas. You know what I'm saying? And in the way that my childhood, like me growing up, it was kind of twofold because like being a military brat, it's it's sheltered and it's and it's um, but it still has a lot to offer in terms of like experience. But then as I got into high school and Going to Colleen High School, anybody who is from Colleen, been to Colleen, kind of knows it's 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 a little rough. It's not the most, you know what I'm saying, safe um, place. You know, it's, it's easy to get caught up in the wrong type of thing. So just like coming up in that environment, I thank God for the the friends and people that I had in my life that would just kind of like, they kind of seen like where I was going and would steer me in a different direction. But I feel like Colleen, Texas, Fort Hood and the the places that I've lived in between Virginia, Japan, all are part of what makes me who I am today and just allow me to be such a diverse person. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for filling in those dots, man. Cause I, you know, I saw that and I was like, I know there's a whole story there. And that was one of the first things I couldn't wait to ask you. My next question uh, would be, you know, with military kids, usually they have like a very, like varied musical taste. Like it's very eclectic. What were some early musical influences from you, even if they weren't hip hop? But what were you listening to being exposed to so many different places and, and you know, times? Uh, fun fact, I uh, the way that I even got into music, I, I started off wanting to rap and I was inspired by like Kanye was like one of my very, very, very early like influences from his production 
to his lyrics, just like the swag, like everything about it. I, I just like Kanye was my favorite rapper for a long time. And then I think when Drake came out with Best I Ever Had, I was like, this guy is the one though. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it was just like, from that moment, I just wanted to just be the best. Like, I want to be a rapper for a long time. And of course, over time, I just developed. And there's like a, a plethora of reasons why, like, I kind of shifted my career a little bit. But like, that kind of inspired me to just, you know what I'm saying, dive into music. So I would say probably Drake, Kanye. Um, my dad is a is an avid T.I. fan, so he used to have a Mustang, a silver Mustang, and and he had a red Firebird. And every time we get in the car, he bumped the T.I., T.I. versus T.I.P., and it was just like, at the time, I didn't understand, but later on, as I grew up, like, I, it's, it's just crazy how life works in the influence, you know? It is, man, and uh, I'm a T.I. fan here, too, so it's it's... For me, I was like, you know, you growing up hearing the music, then getting a chance to work with them is, like you said, that's a full cycle moment, man. Yeah. Um, before I get into your time into Atlanta, I do want to ask, you know, what were some, I guess, hobbies and things that you were interested in, in like your formative years up to high school? Did you play sports? What role did sports play in your life? Because it sounds like you were pretty disciplined, and I know you experienced that discipline, you know, growing up as a military kid. Yeah, man. Um, sports was were very was very important in my life. Actually, prior to being focused on music, I actually wanted to be a um, physical therapist, and that came from I played. So I I told you I lived in Japan. That's when I started playing soccer. I was probably like five or six. So I played soccer from like five or six to probably when I got to high school. I kind of got out of it a little bit, so I had to be probably like. 14, 15, like when I like just wasn't taking it as serious. But I played soccer my whole life and I love the sport um very much. So in between then I ran track just because of course that's just supplemental to soccer. So I did that for a while. Um I played football once, rec league, very important. I felt like just me becoming a man and every anybody who's had a football coach know your coach gonna really, you know what I'm saying, punch you in the chest, let you have it, you know what I'm saying, just toughen you up. So I hated football, but I appreciated the experience. You know what I'm saying? But I try to, you know, I've probably tried like every sport. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just tried it. Like I'm I'm that type of person. I want to try everything and and just, you know what I'm saying, enjoy myself, have fun, try to be the best at it. I'm very competitive. So I think that kind of like shifted into my music. Is it safe to assume that you were academically gifted as well? Um, yeah, actually when I was uh in school, funny story, I've been like in like tag accelerated classes since like second grade. And it's funny because like I was in it and just me being African-American, being a black kid, there's not many of us in the class and I'm living in Texas, you know what I'm saying? So by the time I think I got to like fourth grade, I had kind of peaked the game and I'm like, man, they're going to put me in these classes again. I'm going to be with all these white kids and it's not. At that time, like, honestly, me growing up, like, it wasn't, like, a black kid, white kid thing. I actually, like, grew up, like, very, like, not even really looking at people like that. But when you're the only black kid, you know, it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's just me. Like, I don't really have nobody to relate to on certain things. So I think around, like, fourth grade, I, like, started trying to, like, score lower on tests so I didn't have to be in, in tag class no more. But my mom peeped and she just got on me, so... I ended up right back in the classes the rest of the time, you know what I'm saying? And then from there, middle school, I'm taking advanced classes. I actually graduated at 17. Um, I, I got tired of high school very quickly, and I was ready to get up out of there. So I did what I had to do with the summer school, and I ended up graduating early and, and going to college. So I would say gifted. I love words. I love learning. You know what I'm saying? I like to have a a a, a, a respectable presence about myself, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to mom for for reminding you to just stay the course. Um, sure. So academically there, competitive urge, you decide to say, you know what? I have family in Georgia. I'm going to go to Atlanta. Yes. How do you end up at Clark Atlanta University and what made you decide to go there in particular? Uh, funny story. Back Back to my mom. So. I told you I graduated early. I'm 17 years old. Um, I got a few part-time jobs um, working in the mall. Um, and at the time, I'm thinking, like, 
man, I'm on top of the world. I'm making money. You know what I'm saying? I've always been an independent kid. So it's like, if my mom is, if I'm like, oh, I want an iPhone. And she's like, oh, okay, cool. You're not going to get it for me? All right, well, I'm going to go figure out the money to buy my own iPhone. I'm going to go figure out the money to do this. So at the point where I could actually have a job and make money, I'm like, oh, it's lit. Like, it's cool. I'm not in school. Like, I'm just making money. And then she's like, well, you know, you you can't just, like, sit at the house and work. Like, you got you to gotta go to school. You got to do something. And I'm a year ahead of all my peers. So she sends me on a college trip with um, the youth center to uh, Clark, Clark Atlanta University. Basically, I had the choice between, like, you can go visit Clark. You can visit, like, an art institute, I think Morehouse, and maybe, like, another school. And then it was just, like, the moment I went to Clark, like, they just had it set up perfect. I'm seeing everybody step in. I'm, I'm going through the campus. I'm meeting people. And I'm just like, I think this is it. And I'm not even understanding the actual culture of Atlanta at the time. But just school, I'm just like, oh, yeah, like, I love it. Like, cool. Da, da, da. I come back with my mom. It was fun. I think I want to move to Georgia, go to school in Atlanta. And I got family, like, not two hours away. So I'm like, you know what I'm saying? This is pretty cool. I feel comfortable. And that's just how that ended up happening. Man, and that's just listening to how your story is developing. It seemed like a lot of things like develop the way they were supposed to to kind of give you the best opportunities. Um, Clark Atlanta is known for, you know, for having certain programs that are really reputable. How did your time at Clark Atlanta prepare you for the world? And what did you end up studying? Um, Funny story about that. Um, I had a few mentors um, at the time. Like when I came to Clark, I'm still on my rapper vibe i'm trying to i'm trying to figure that out i'm thinking i'm gonna be the biggest rapper in the world so like first day of school like all the guys that are in the music we end up in my dorm room like we're trying to record songs i had all the music equipment so everybody's in my room like yeah let's make a song da, 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 doing all this that and the third and like over time i just like realized that wasn't it but i had very quickly got introduced to the music industry. One of my close, close friends, um, Mario Beats, he ended up producing across the country for Migos. So people had always told me, like, you're really like more of a manager. So I was always in these rooms. Like we're we're in QC studio early. We're going to A3C with with Rich the Kid, uh, the Migos, like before, like everything is like super lit. And I'm just seeing everything. So to be honest, like when I was in school, I was trying so hard to to get out because I had seen like how big the world is and everything was going on. So I was just really trying to pass my classes. I actually had a professor, um, Professor Leak, and she used to just be on me because like, I remember one day, like I was probably like my sophomore year and I'm just like, man, I'm thinking I'm gonna just drop out. And some girl, I don't, I forgot who, some girl had like told her that I was trying to drop out of school. And, and she like pulled me, like I'm about to leave the class. She pulled me to the side. She said, I heard you about to drop out. Da, 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 da. She was like, that's not happening. Like, you're not doing that. Are you going to finish? So like, she knew like I worked with Tip, da, 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 da. So every time I come into class, she's like, I don't care who you work for. I don't care what you do. You're going you gonna to do your work. You're going to da, 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 da. So I ended up graduating top of her class, had the highest, you know what I'm saying, grade on my final project, everything with that. And, and to that same point, like my OGs, my mentors from Grand Hustle were like, Nah, bro, just finish school, just finish school. But to be honest, bro, while I was there, the most important thing that I got was the relationships, the the people that I met. I appreciate the education for sure. I love to learn, but like, I was ready to go, bro. I was so ready to just run, run around Atlanta and just make something of myself. Hey, man, you did it too. You know, when you literally say, oh, yeah, man, I'm in class, but I'm running with Tip. I'm like, man, how did you, uh, how did you get the chance to, start as an A&R with Grand Hustle? And what did your responsibilities consist of? Man, I, it's crazy because the person who who introduced me to the situation, I'll probably never speak to again in my life, but it was, it was really fake because I'm walking in my dorm and he's like walking on like the top floor. And he's like, hey, Dre, I heard, um, I heard that uh, Grand Hustle is doing interviews for interns you heard about it and I'm like nah send it to me so he ended up sending it to me I ended up pulling up and I ended up pulling up to the interview interview with the girl she she uh brings me on as an intern and that's that's where I meet my mentor Mark Jackson and from there it was on it was like 
I'm at the studio. I'm learning how to how to um engineer. I'm putting together CDs. I'm um I'm cleaning bathrooms. I'm sitting in on sessions. I'm doing I'm doing any anything that I can do. I'm I'm doing promo runs. I'm holding up signs. I'm putting up posters. I'm doing anything. I'm sleeping at the office sometimes. As soon as I get out of class, I'm at the studio the rest of the night. Till till I I gotta leave or or whatever the case is. I got class the next day. Some days I'm in class sleep, but it's just like it was such a rush to just be here in this situation. And and at the time I didn't even know who everybody was in the grand scheme of things at the label, I was just happy to be a part of the situation. You know what I'm saying? So that was probably like the most important like part of my matriculation in the music industry because it was very early on I learned like you're never too good to do anything. I don't care if you're the president of the label. If, if you can't do the same thing that the a r or intern is doing, then you, you're a waste of that position because it's just like you can never be too good to do that. You can't never forget where you come from. So that's what I feel like I learned in that position. Man, 2017 when you started, you know, Brand Hustle was going through a lot of major change at that point. Hustle Gang is around at the time. What were, or I won't even say what were, but who were some acts that you got the chance to work with and got to know? And what were some things that you started to see there that you didn't think you would see. Crazy thing. I told you I, I was, um, I was, so when I decided I wasn't going to be a rapper, that's when I realized that I was going to try to be a producer. And once again, shout out to Mario Beats. He's the person who gave me Fruity Loops, put out my computer. And from there it was on. And I ended up, produ my first placement that I ever had with, is a very talented writer, uh, London J. Um, he's he's wrote things for uh Cardi B, um, Lotto, like a, like plenty of just you know what I'm saying super dope artists, and it's so crazy because I was just chilling, like you know being an intern, like you know what up London, this is the same guy, like I didn't I'll drive him to the Jamaican spot to get some food. So over time, I'm just building these relationships, and then I'm in the studio, I'm like I got some beats, I play him, I play him a beat, and he like I'm about to do it right now, and ended up going on his project. And I just never expected that. So that being my first placement, it just like motivated me more for me to end up. I think like a few months later, it was like, I don't know what came first. So I did London. I did London's project. And then I went on to do a Gangsta Grills with Young Dro. And me and Dro is just super cool now. Like from the moment we worked together, it was just like we had just like good chemistry. So he always tell me like, Dre, like your beats just make me want to like, say something important, like, you know what I'm saying? Like from the heart. So I, me and Joe just had a super amazing relationship. Um, from there, I ended up producing Grinding for YFN Lucci um, on his Free to Sun um, EP. And we actually did a few more songs too. Um, we did this song, not many people know, it's a song called Project Baby. Um, I think he gave us on the Ferrari Fred, one of his artists that he works with. But that's also one of my favorite songs I've, I've done with Lucci. And then, from there, that's that's really just my grand hustle, like in, intro to the music industry. Like that's that's probably like where it started for me. Like when I got the Lucci placement, it was like it's on. Like now you got to really like prove yourself, you know. Man, what would you say would be some misconceptions people have about Fruity Loops? Now it's, it's changed over the years. Like people have started to look at it as more of a reputable production sound but what are some misconceptions you think people might still have about fruity loops and its ability to make good music now i think the the real problem is the access because for example like you have ableton which you could just as easily get i um me growing up like in texas schools one thing i could say that i'd appreciate so basically like from like inception of being in school they teach you how to use uh, like Apple products. Like I think they got to deal with Apple. So we were using like Logic very early. We're using GarageBand like first, second grade. So by the time I'm like grown, like I'm knowing how to use like a lot of these different dogs. But it's like Fruity Loops is just the most accessible thing that people know about. So anybody can go get it and you can almost click, just click stuff in and you can kind of have a beat. Versus if you use Logic or you use these other platforms, it takes a little bit more, uh, like you got to get a little bit more friendly with the with the interface that you're working with. So I feel like the beautiful and the 
the bad thing about Fruity Loops is that it's so accessible that anybody can get on there and make a beat. But you'll quickly realize that even still, it's not as easy as you think. And it takes time. It takes it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of studying to like learn and do different tricks and people learn their own thing. So I appreciate Fruity Loops because though it's it's easy to hop into, you still got to get in there and like learn your own little tricks that 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 only you know how to do. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of misconceptions about it, but I just feel like it's not as easy as you think. Like everybody has to go kind of figure out their own swag with their doll, like no matter what you're using, but it definitely should be respected. Cause you know what I'm saying? Like, like look at Southside. Southside's gone on to like, you know what I'm saying? Do shit with Jay-Z, Beyonce, Future, like all these different people, but this is all on, on Fruity Loops. So as much as you want to downplay it, the 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 results and the numbers speak for itself. Facts, man. Facts. Um, you mentioned your work with Young Dro. I think you said that you did a Gangsta Grills with Dro. Mm-hmm. Could you describe Dro's creative process? Because that's something I've always wondered. For him to be able to make the kind of music he does, and for him to be able to write at the level he does, what are some things that you notice from just being in the studio with them? Um, it's it's very interesting because. Early on, I wish I honestly wish I had paid. I think I was just so excited. I wish I had paid more attention early on to just like the different things that he was doing. Of course, I've always respected him and looked up to him just, you know, what I'm saying growing up and hearing his songs. But one thing I could say now, me spending a, a lot more time around Dro and um me, one, I want to congratulate him on his sobriety. And just I feel like him now is such a different person that he was then, but the talent has always been there. So now the process is just like super like, it's even more like supernatural how he'll just like go in there. Like you see a lot of rappers, they need this and they need that and they need this. And it's just like, Dro Dro has a flip phone in his brain. He just goes in the studio. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's no distraction. Like he just goes in there and the way that he could rhyme words. I remember it's it's the funniest, the funniest story. It was like, I was listening to him. I forgot what song it was. He said something crazy, like something I'm getting bread like Felosha. I said, what is that? And I Googled it and it was a type of bread. And I said, bruh, how do you even know? How do you even know that and know to to put that in your rhyme? Like, and and it's just like even now, like I've been I've been working with the PSC and they and they've been working on their project. And it's just like, bro, like you still got gas, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I I just I just supernatural that's that's how i could describe dro's process in, in his talent bro and i was just about to ask you a different question but i heard the psc album <laughs> and i so now as a as a fan i'm gonna ask you um i know that they've been working and they, they just released a single and dro and everybody was going in but uh from from what you're hearing so far what should people be expecting is it is it going to be like flashes of the past? Is it a completely different sound? What would you say? I feel like it's a great question. It's crazy because I wouldn't say it's flashes of the past, but also the project isn't finished yet. So we're still working. Um, there's definitely some odes to um if you if you're familiar with Atlanta in the culture. There's some odes to Atlanta and things that I think is nostalgic for the people who understand and know PSC and know Atlanta. I also feel like there's a lot of new sounds on there. They're definitely open to working with newer producers, younger producers, and it's not really about name. It's just, are you hard? Like, is, is it hard? Like, you know what I'm saying? And 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 even with them, they're going in there to compete. Like, you know what I'm saying? Of course, it's a friendly competition amongst each other, amongst each other but they're going in there to compete. So Matt going to give you some. Dro gonna give you some, country gonna give you some, and then of course you know tip, like you know what I'm saying. So that's the fun part to me. Like you can hear on songs where it's like, "Dang, Dro went crazy," and then you hear a tip verse, and it's like, "Oh, tip, tip can tell Dro, Dro did this thing. He had to, he had to come with something else." So it's just like it's a very, it's a very dope process, and I would just say that I think the fans will be pleasantly surprised because I'm I'm a young guy, so. A lot of my peers might say even what who is PSC, you know what I'm saying? So I think hearing like new ears hearing the music, 
they'll still be tapped into it. You know what I'm saying? Of course, we're going through our A&I process, but me being a young guy, I'm going to make sure that the hard records make it on there for sure. Hey, bro, I'm, I'm waiting on it. I can't wait as a – I'm a little bit older than you, so I can't wait, you know, because I was listening to him in high school. Um, so it'll be it'll be good to hear. Uh, Trey, my question, because you, you mentioned – and I can understand it, hearing like your favorites and seeing your favorites in real time and getting adjusted to that. What was your first I made it moment where you where you looked around and was like, I, I think I did it? Was it the placement with Lucci? Was it was a meeting tip? What was it? Mm. If I'm being like completely honest with you, bro. I I wouldn't say that I made it just because. I'm I'm blessed to be like surrounded by a lot of OGs. And to be honest, a lot of people look at it like, damn, that's that's super dope. Like, you know what I'm saying? You around Tip, you around Doug, you around PSC, you around all these people. But there's also a pressure that comes with it because it's like, that's y'all legacy. Like, y'all had Dro, y'all had B.O.B., you know what I'm saying? Y'all y'all had all of that. So it's like me creating my, my own legacy is what's important to me where, where you attach that to me. I would hate for somebody to say like, yeah, you, you with Grand Hustle and it's dope. Like which I got going, which I had going on with Dro and Tip that I know. I want to talk about what's going on right now. I want to talk about what what Damani is doing, what Forever Records got going on, and and how big that that is and could be, and what it what it can grow to mean to the culture. So I honestly, feel like I haven't made it yet, but I feel like my team, everybody that I'm working with, we're definitely making steps in the right direction. We just got uh, added to Dreamville Fest. Uh, the announcement went out, I believe it was yesterday or the day before, but that's the type of thing that just makes me know that I'm going in the right direction. But to say I made it, I'll be doing myself a disservice because I feel like I got so much more to go and the, and the type of heist that I'm trying to see, like truth be told, they can't be seen. They could, you, you just got to go there and say, I'm, oh, I'm here. I didn't even know that there was, this is a level. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, I do know what you're saying. And I was like, this is a perfect segue because I definitely got the Dreamville notification yesterday and I, and I saw... Uh, Damani's name on there so that that would be my perfect segue um do you recall the first time you met Damani and if not or if so when did you know that you wanted to be a part of his career um funny story about Damani so I've had a lot of different like you know workings with Grand Hustle like I used to be tips assistant on and off um of course, a and r producing for artists, things of that nature. So um, working with Tip's right hand, Doug Peterson, I remember one day, he's just like, you're going to be, you're going to be the money manager. I'm like, I don't even, I didn't even tell you I want to like manage nobody. Like, you know what I'm saying? But he's just like, he just put it on me. So at first I'm like, I don't even know what that means, what it entails, like what come with it or anything. But I'm just like, all right. So over time, like it just grew into what it is today as far as how me and Damani met I want to say the one of the first times I met Damani because we're, we're like family it's like cousins like you know what I'm saying so it's like a, like two times I can remember that either one of these probably was close to the first time was we were in South by Southwest and I was like new to like assistant tip and working with him and stuff like that and this Damani with the short dreads he him and him and Turbo still like hanging out. Like this is this is Turbo without the dreads, you know what I'm saying? And this is just like one year South by Southwest, and I'm just like, like really like slick. Who are these guys? Like they just young like me. Like, you know what I'm saying? So we just all hanging out. So I'm not really that familiar yet. But as time will go on, like, I don't know if you're familiar with the basement. Um, but basically Tip's mama's house was basically the shelter for all the guys who wanted to do music and through that process like i'm in the basement damani there shot the god there turbo there wheezy there uh uh quay there like the list goes on and on basically anybody who's popping in the music industry if you didn't go to uh if you ain't go to the basement you probably you probably ain't like that or you probably lying if you say you you weren't down there but a lot of us was down there but all that to say the moment when i knew that Damani was the one I'll never forget bro and this is the same night I think that we me and him did like our first song together because I produced some records for Damani and we were just having a conversation about life and he was just like 
talking to me and the the subject matter that he had and, and, and the maturity that he had at the time because he's a few years younger than me. It was so crazy because we both young, but you talking to me like you older than me. And it was just blowing my mind. And then after that, he was playing me records and I'm hearing the music and I'm like, wow, like this kid is really like super talented for real. And I think from that moment, I was locked in and I was a fan. And it was just like, whether I'm your manager or your friend and your family, like I see where this is going. And I and I just bought in early and and I continue to just grow. And, and now we're, we're where we are today. You know what I'm saying? And I can say just uh just from what I see from your post on him that there's a genuine love and commitment to seeing him be in his best. I can I can tell that just from what you post. Um Forever Records, whose whose uh brainchild was that? And if you had to explain Forever Records to complete strangers, how would you describe the label? Forever Records, um uh... Damani, that's that's Damani's brainchild. Um, and that really just came from just like him being creative and kind of like it speaks for itself kind of in what he wants to be as an artist. It's like I'm not here to be the guy who had a hot song or I did I bought into this gimmick and it worked, or you know what I'm saying? I had to do this to get on. It's just more so like I'm here to be authentically myself and I'm here with my people and we're being authentically ourselves. And this is going to be something that's going to be forever lasting. So forever records is, is exactly that. We have people on our team that are, that are locked in and it's like, of course it's a business, but it's deeper than that. It's a family and in the type of talent that we work with, the type of talent that we, you know what I'm saying? Aspire to sign and even have under our umbrella right now. And it's, it's just more of a, we're not really, like I said, we're not about the gimmicks. It's just really like, do you make good music? Do you make do you make something that's authentic? Because it's not a thing where it's like, oh, you make trap music, so we ain't rocking with you, or we're tied into a certain type of genre. It's just more like the authentic, authenticity of the, of the character, of the person, of the music. Like, does it have substance? Does it all come together? What's the story that you're telling? So I think that we live that just through our, through our day-to-day lives, any city that we came to, fans that met us, that we, like, we're known for throwing parties. If you ever came to one of our get-togethers, you you hung out with us, like, you, you know, like, you know what we're about. And it's really just about, like, good vibes, good energy, like, you know what I'm saying? Just just being authentic. So I think that's that's what Forever Records means to the industry. I feel like it's a lot of... You could tell, like, we keep hearing the conversation. It's a lot of, you know what I'm saying, stuff that's going to the wayside. And it's like, that's why I feel like the money is prospering in this time because all of that is going to the side and you're seeing that, you know what I'm saying, the real is here to stay. Man, I agree with that. And honestly, just seeing seeing how he's evolved, even in, even if you just said in a year, the music has a consistent sound and it's not trying to be anything but what it is. So, you know, I can I can definitely hear that. How would you describe being a curator? So you're a curator or a director for the Trap Museum. How would you describe that to someone? And I think my next question based off that would be, you know, how what are your thoughts on how big the Trap Museum has come in the time it's been? Man, man. That's so crazy because I remember I was like the one who picked up the keys to the building like in first like open the door and and didn't even understand what we were about to do necessarily and just like seeing everything that it was before like nobody would really understand like what that building looked like before we came and really put our touch on it but to grow and be a flagpole for into the culture not only for Atlanta but trap music and the world is just like an honor and I think sometimes like I may downplay it because it's my real life and just something that I've been doing for years. But when you really look back at it, like taking myself away from it and looking more at maybe my team or like the actual entity of the museum, it's like, it's really colossal. Like it's, it's, it's the first of its kind. It's one of a kind. As many people try to copy and, you know what I'm saying? do something similar. It doesn't really have the same effect as a trap music museum. And I feel like the reason for that is that we went into it with, an authentic 
um, energy and intention. It was like we it started from from arguments and a lot of arguments and conversations about who's the best this, who's the best that, who started this, how far can this go back to the point where we're going back and forth every day, arguing, 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 arguing. And then as a collector, we like, dang, like it just led to we need to find a way to like teach more people about this and and just push this conversation further. And then from there, it was like, here we got the Trap Music Museum. And to be honest, it was only supposed to be a pop up. And from the from day one, it just went crazy. And it was like, there's no way we could shut it down. We actually tried to shut it down and told people the doors were closed and they like protested and was is complaining. And so we ended up opening it back up. And then now we're here five years later, just celebrated our fifth year anniversary. And it's just like it's surreal. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just happy to be able to be a part of it. And Who's to tell like how far this story even goes? I would agree, man. And and when it first popped up, it was a very hot ticket. I made sure that I went and, and took my lady. And it, you know, I still look at the pictures of it now. And just when you see how it's evolved, I was just like, man, this is this is something that was necessary and it created a lot of dialogue. Um, I've heard a lot of words in our talk forever, legacy. And I, I want to ask you, you know, when people think about Trey Good, you know, because you're good everywhere, what do you want people to associate with your name and how, what do you want, I guess, your overall legacy to be? Um, I would say I would want my legacy to be that, like I told you at the beginning of, of, of this conversation, like, if I could, bro, I promise, I would, I would literally make it my life journey to just have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with every single person on this planet because it's just like it's it's crazy how far like my brand has grown even good everywhere and the support I've got from it but the whole point of it is it's like no matter where you're at where you go where you start it doesn't matter like you could go anywhere you could do anything I've seen a million stories about where people start people start from poverty I haven't seen people start up and go down I haven't seen people down and go up so the whole point is just like it's your mindset. It's like, if you feel like you're good everywhere, then you will be. You can't you can't go into a situation like, I don't know, I'm kind of da 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 Then it's going to be that. I remember I was reading a book the other day, and they were just basically saying, like, you have to change your thought process. So if you, if you want to feel like you have, um, feel like you're wealthy, feel like you have, you know what I'm saying, indispensable resources, say you had $20. Take that twenty dollars, go get it, go get twenty ones, and just give them out. Just give them out to people, and it's just like, it's just the thought process of like, okay, well, I didn't gave out these twenty dollars. I know it's coming back to me. I done blessed these people. I've I've done whatever. I've touched you in in whatever way, and it's like I'm not thinking about how I'm gonna get it back. I know I'm gonna get it back, but it's but I have to continue to put in the work. So as far as Dre Good, what I would say like. I would want to be like remembered for is just putting people on. That's something like that I've always found joy in, in a piece and just being able to help somebody because I wouldn't be in my situation if, if people didn't help me. And what I would hear so much is like, bro, you're only this old. You're, you're a young guy, bro. you got so much ahead of you and you're, and you're doing this. And then it, it just goes back to the pressure, but it's like, I've taken that pressure and just turned it into a positive energy. Like, Shoot. Okay, cool. Well, y'all putting that on me? Say less. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be that guy. So now I was the young guy that people telling me you're gonna be him. I need to find my young guys, young young women that I wanna put on and help do that. And we create a cycle because I feel like it's so many times like people don't pay it forward and they, they don't understand that that little thing that you did for somebody, how big it really is in the grand scheme of things. So it's like I feel like the the love and the the good nature that I show people is going to take me so much further than the dollar amount that I could get from a deal that I could get from a show that I could get from, from anything. It's the relationships that I have with people. There's not, I don't feel in danger anywhere I go. I feel, I feel safe. If I go to any city, I feel I can call somebody. I know somebody. And to me, that's, that's priceless to me. So being good everywhere is just, you know what I'm saying? You, you always got that relationship. You always got that call. People call me and say, Dre, I know you know this person. Can you get me in contact? I might not even know him. But the fact that you asked me makes me want to figure it out. And then I realized how easy it was for me to get in contact with. 
So, man, and I will attest to the the power of relationships because the the fact that I'm even talking to you right now is a testament to it. And you know just how gracious and humble you've been about it is just it's super appreciated, bro. You know you're taking time out today to do it, so I appreciate it. For sure, bro. Um, I love it. Man, I have one more question for you. Uh, what can people expect to hear from your artist and from you in 2024? Man, from Damani. We might hit y'all. I'm really getting y'all too much, but it's cool. I might we might hit y'all with like one, two more EPs. We in album mode right now though, but we want to still like bless the fans. But the the music as as you've heard is sounding amazing. Um, we're trying to get y'all a few more features. Um, the fans been asking for a tour, so I'm trying to put that together for everybody. Um, they've been showing us a lot of love in in Texas and Chicago, um, out out in the Bay in LA. So, oh, and South Africa. I got to show love to South Africa because they love us and, and we love y'all back. So I want to show love to y'all. That's family. Um, but yeah, man, like. It's 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 about to get real big for for forever records for the money and and it's it's obvious but I'm just saying it because it's it's coming and once we're here we're here to stay. Um, as far as me, uh, I I got a few I got a few records in the tuck. Um, I know they've been waiting for me to drop some more music with with Los and Nutty. Um, I got a collab project with with Los and Shabazz out of Detroit. I'm trying to get that to y'all this year. There's a, also another super dope artist I love to listen to named Shoddy Cash. Me and him got a few records. I'm probably going to go out to, Det to Detroit, um, do an EP with him. And then there's a few other artists out there. Probably tap back in with uh, GT and do a follow-up project to what we've been working on. But, man, I'm trying to think what else I got got going on um, music-wise, few records I got. I'm just, I'm just working. I'm just working, bro. I'm just working with everybody, anybody who wants to work with me. Um... I want to shout out some of the producers that's just been a part of my process. Um, Presley P, Skate 808, Matt Tazic, Mario Beats. Um, hope I'm not missing nobody, but those are like my my guys, like like my guys who just like help me just like kind of stay in that mode because people don't understand because they just hear the music. So they don't really understand the business that comes with the music and how hard it is. And sometimes you gotta call your guy and just check on him and say, "Hey, bro, you good?" Because I know how to, I know how it be, I know how the business be. I know sometimes people want to play with you, you know. They don't, you don't get your deposit, you don't, you don't get what you're owed, and you gotta fight to get your money and everything like that. And it's just like, like you sometimes you gotta check on your people and just let them know, like keep going, and and you get it. So I appreciate the people that have just like been in my corner, and and helped me figure that out, but. Man, we just working, bro. We got a lot in, in the in the Woolworths just coming out. We got new merch for y'all, new music for y'all, new content for y'all. And and hopefully, you know, if things go well, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to work on this film. I want to I want to do something very, very creative and drop this film for y'all. So hopefully we can get that done before the end of the year. But that's what I got going on, man. I'm just trying to continue to be creative and push the culture. That's that's very important. I feel like us black people don't understand that we're the curators of culture for the world, not just us, but the world. I don't care what race you are. You would be telling a bold faced lie if you said that you weren't influenced by black culture. So I'm just here to continue to push that. 